You know what I had to deal with? I had to deal with After Earth. You didn't have to see this shit, okay? God damn. God damn this movie. <laughs> Bennett didn't even watch this shit. I just know everything about the movie that needs to be known. Oh, you don't know shit. You don't know nothing. Because <laughs> I'm releasing the Kraken. Oh, God. Oh, we need more than that. <laughs> this was worse than I thought it would be. And I know that sounds stupid. Like, no, you know, actually, I didn't think it was good, this was going to be that bad. You know, like, I, I really didn't. I, I didn't. I thought this was just going to be below average. I thought this was just going to be like, it was going to just, just kind of bland. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah. I just thought I was going to watch it and go, like, well, that was a big pile of nothing. No. This was, like... This was a pile. Th no, this was, like... This was, like... This sat on your face. You know what I mean? It was boring. No, this was... This was... My, th this was so bad, the characters were, like falling asleep like the, the characters were like fighting to stay awake in this you remember that scene when like will smith was like he's like oh and he's he's it, it, like it's supposed to be like from blood loss but he, like he's he's like oh, i can't i i can't and he's just like uh uh and he just like slumps over the console he's so bored he's so fucking bored you know what we can't you know what we can't start we, we can't start there we have to start with the previews, because right. these previews were such dog shit. First Even off, the previews were dog shit? Yes, yes, the previews sucked my ass. Hang on. The first one, upon walking in, we kind of walked in as it going. Oh. But it was Grown Ups 2. Mm. Oh, wait, was that Kevin James? Yes. Adam oh. Sandler, Kevin James. Because it's David funny. Reed. They're funny because they're man-children. Still. Isn't that the joke of 40 year old virgin all over again? Because Kevin James is a man child, which is the plot of every fucking. I don't know, whenever Kevin. I see an Adam Sandler movie, I, I it's kind of a white noise. I just hear him going, ah! Adam Sandler has that screech, and he just always does it. He's got one voice, Adam Sandler, where he's, you know, I didn't mean this young! You know, like that. This. <laughs> So I'll, we're walking in during Grown Ups, and I didn't even know what it was, but I just heard, <laughs> Get the hell off of my car! Ah! You know, like, <laughs> Don't mess with the Zoheads! At least he stopped doing that simpering female voice. Would you like a piece of pie? No, he does. He's, he does. Like, when he, he did. does that shit? No, when he did Jack and Jill. Oh. You know, like, No, that was. That was. Ooh, that Jack, Jack and Jill. Hi! Jack and Jill was all right by me, if only because Al Pacino had... It had no! Been. No, Jack and Jill was all, get the fuck out. I'm saying one scene can redeem a movie, and Al Pacino singing the Dunkachino song. Oh, the Dunkin' Dunkachino. Fucking hell. When she sat on the fucking pony, and the fucking pony's legs exploded. <laughs> oh, fuck you, chat room. Who the, Hunter? I liked Waterboy. Yeah, 1997 called, and it told you to fuck off. I liked... Yeah, you're that guy. You're that guy who every time someone brings up Adam Sandler, they say, oh, come on, Happy Gilmore was awesome. Happy Gilmore was 17 years ago. What the fuck have you done for me lately? Asshole. Hey, Billy Madison was all right. Stop looking at me, Swan! <laughs> God damn! God, the guy makes two good movies! And they were the same movie! Happy Gilmore and fucking Billy Madison! About a fucking retarded guy going back to school or playing golf! It's the same movie! By that logic, I could go, but Spoonie! 
Unbreakable was good. Oh, and God. Sixth Sense was a good movie. God, shut up. <laughs> I'm already spilling shit on myself. Cheers, folks. Whatever I... Fuck off, Hunter. I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm not in the mood. You're getting a timeout. You're gonna go sit in the corner. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna sit in the corner until you shut the fuck up. You're banning him from the chat? No, I'm making him sit in the corner and wear the fucking hat of shame. He's that guy. He's that guy who said, "Oh, I loved Happy Gilmore." God damn it. So next. Hmm. Yeah, and next was R.I.P.D. This movie... Well, if you haven't seen this movie, go on YouTube, look up R.I.P.D. Look it up right now. Chat room, go... Like, you don't even need to just, like, mute it and, like, look it up right now. No, 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 it's not Rhode Island Police Department. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's not. No, 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 no. It's the MIB wannabe. It's no, it's not. It's not yes. the MIB wannabe. It's it's Men in Black copied, copied. It's it's point for point. It's exact. It's fucking exactly the same. It's just like it's it. Not even did. It's, it's it's just like the, there's a secret organization that deals with alien infiltrators, and it's a bunch of you know it's it's an old veteran guy and a young hip guy that are dealing with crazy aliens. Oh, and who is this young hip guy? Uh, Ryan Reynolds, I think. Yes. Yep. Yeah. But and and I they're, they're I am willing to give this movie a pass. No, you're not. Fuck you. <laughs> Come on! I mean, when has ever, when has Jeff Bridges ever steered you wrong? No, no. Invalid URL. Why is this something to be angry about? Time out. See, I actually want to see the movie where they team up Jeff Bridges no. with Tommy Lee Jones. If you don't know why that's something to be angry about, you get to sit in the corner. <laughs> for ten minutes. Because at least Tommy Lee Jones and Jeff Bridges could have the dueling, like... Banter off. Okay, okay, no, no, no. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta confront this because I'm sick of hearing about this. Okay, I, I'm so sick of hearing about this, and because every time somebody, I get this email like daily. Somebody is like disgusted, disgusted. They're like, "Did you know that there's going to be a Highlander remake?" And I'm like, "Yes." Do I look like the kind of motherfucker doesn't know that there's going to be a Highlander remake? I fucking based my life around the Highlander movies. Are you fucking kidding me? So that's what was up with all those beheadings in Arizona those years ago. Fucking hell, man. And like, and like, they go, did you know there's going to be a Highlander movie? But then, this is what gets me. They're like, they're disgusted. It's like, and Ryan Reynolds is going to be Connor McCloud. Ugh. And they type it out. They go, ugh. And I'm like, what's with that reaction? Like, why that? Like, okay, he's not he's not any great shakes, but like, what's with the revolting? What what's with the revol revulsion there? You know, like, uh, probably the Green Lantern fallout. But like, that wasn't his fault. Like, that wasn't Ryan Reynolds' fault. That was a fact. Like, you gotta be able to separate here the fault of the actors versus the screenwriters. You know what I mean? Like, you could have put anybody in Green Lantern, and that movie still would have been balls. You know? Like, so you gotta be able to separate the, the actors versus the screenplay. So, can like... I, can I have a little aside here? Yeah. I was pulling for that movie. I was so... Oh, so pulling. was I! Oh. But like, I was actually defending the choice of Ryan Reynolds in that movie. Like, yeah. My friend, my friend Gabe was just like, dude, Ryan Reynolds? Really? He was like, no, you don't understand. Hal Jordan doesn't really have much of a personality. I and mean, if I know the filmmakers, they weren't going to give him that much personality to begin with, even if they were going to write the movie competently. 
So I had no problem with Ryan Reynolds. He was just going to be a cipher, as far as I was concerned. Oh, speaking of cipher. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Gonna get to that. <laughs> R.I.P.D. This fucking movie. It doesn't even attempt to conceal what the fuck it is. What I was more, what I didn't like most about it actually was the pina colada. Was the special effects look horrible? They look like Van Helsing bad. Well, no, no, no. But like, it's it's Men in Black. No, I get it. No, but I mean, like, no, the special effects are like right out of Men in Black. They're the same kind. It's cartoony as hell. You know, like with the same kind of bugs. Like you know, like the the dead guy with the hundreds of eyes. It's it's downright the same with the bug guys. Are we gonna? Uh, by the way, guys, let's uh, name our drinks here for everyone asking. Mm -hmm. I got. Go ahead. Blue Moon, and then Blue Label. Breaking the good stuff out. I got my girly pina colada. And I'm enjoying myself a nice glass of warm wild turkey. Mm. Ooh, you got the wild turkey. Oh, yeah. He's one that one straight bourbon. Mm. He's stepping up his game. If you're going to go the hard stuff, I might have to... I might have to... I might have to step up with you. At the very least, the movie needs to say it's Rooster Cogburn in this. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's the other... <laughs> Because not only that, they're not even attempting to hide the fact that they're basically the same characters. Like, you know, you got the guy with the southern drawl, so it's basically Tommy Lee Jones, except it's like Rooster Cogburn, you know? So the fact that the title is, like, initials, instead of M-I-B, it's R-I-P-D. You know what I mean? So, like, it's, it's so blatant. Oh, hey, I just got it. Right? You know? God damn, derp. <laughs> but then there's... This one pisses me off, too. And this is just marketing, from a marketing standpoint. World War Z. Oh. Uh, this movie looks like shit. I'll say this one moment. When they had that big old panning shot of a bunch of zombies, like, lemoning, lemoning over that edge, did anyone get that, like... Flashbacks to that fucking uh, Donald Faison trailer, you know, that trailer for, what was it, Skyline? Skyline. Yeah, where they siphoned up all those people. I was getting flashbacks to that moment. But, I, I can see where you're coming from, but the other thing I can tell is that movie is based around moments. That movie is based around storyboards. You know what I mean? Yeah, where, like, I, I understand. They built that movie around, like, some guy came around and he brought these little storyboards. He's like, we're going to have a movie where Brad Pitt flies a helicopter around a city and there's these dudes, like, these zombies are, like, boiling over this wall. And there's going to be a movie, that we're going to have this scene where Brad Pitt's in Air Force One and the tail section rips off and he's going to be, like, hanging on a chair. And they're going to do this thing. So, like, it, like, it doesn't matter how Brad Pitt gets there just so long as he's flying a helicopter at some point over this city and the zombies are there. There's gonna be a there's gonna be a cure for zombieism in this movie. <laughs> Isn't that kind of defeat the point of the zombie apocalypse? That's no, I already see the hints of it in the trailer. They're like, Brad Pitt, you must go to Russia. Yeah. Because Patient Zero is there, and you must yeah. get it within yeah. 72 hours or but, the world is destroyed. No, that, that's not, but that's not the main thing, is that... But that's not what World War Z is. Because I've read the book. Like, that's not, that's not what World War Z is. He even used it as a prop in one of his videos. It, like... It, Alright, assuming that the zombieism is cured, how does the world kind of function after that? It's like, hey, no, 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 there's a bunch of zombies. No, 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 but did, well, did you read the book? No, I didn't read Okay, didn't. okay, well, let's, but, okay, what happens in the trailer, okay. The book is about the aftermath of the zombie apocalypse. Like, this isn't a spoiler. The book is the, we win. The zombie apocalypse. The book is about the, the aftermath. The movie is like during. 
which is bullshit. So World War Z, the book, is basically us trying to rebuild what we lost. Yes, it's it's about it's like a it's like a documentary of witness accounts of things that happened during and after the re the you know the re the reconstruction of you know what happened. Um, so, but what what pissed me off about this? I wasn't even paying attention to what was happening because I was just face palming so hard because the entire trailer was based around this. Boom! No! Boom! Run! Boom! Get out of here! Boom! World War Z. Boom! The end. Fuck you! Can I just say that whole Inception sound, brass, you know, that heavy bass sound was overused when Mass Effect 3 did it. I thought it was even old hat when they did it, and two years later we're still doing it? Yeah. Ugh, God. And finally, we had the, uh, Twilight meets John Constantine. Uh. We're not even close to being done with that. <laughs> no. The Twilight... No, the, the Twilight shit, we're not even close to being done. Because you were like, another one? And I'm like... <laughs> no, 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 no. But... Okay, go ahead. Because you, you were stunned by this, and I was like... I, I was like, like gallows humor. I was like, it's going to get fun. No, I just... I was surprised at uh, how quickly this sort of thing oh. turned out. I put I mean, way I, too much rum in this. I knew, <gasps> There's not enough rum. I, know, I knew right? that, that people would come out with more Twilight shit, but I'm just surprised the oh, wait, speed wait, wait, of wait, it. Wait, wait. Constantine was fucking awesome? Really? Avatar said Constantine was fucking awesome? Well, who said that? Avatar said. Go on, go on. Uh, no, I just wanted to call that out. That was... Mm, mm. But there's a... There's a brown-haired girl that's all alone in this world, and she doesn't feel special until she sees someone who's dark and mysterious. And he hunts zombies? Demons. Demons. Oh, no, there's demons. And only she can see him because she's special. <clears throat> what I don't get is only she can see the demon hunters as well. Because they're all, well, they're, they're kind of dressed all matrixy too. Because they dress, they they wear like like bondage leather outfits. Yeah, like, they did the Reservoir Dogs slow walk down the yeah, street. Yeah, but and they, she's got the bondage gear on. Because they wear like dominatrix. Because they got like like uh, wooden stakes like all over their bodies, and they got like whip like Simon Belmont whips and shit like that. And you can already see the the marketing ploy is that we want Twilight, but there wasn't any action in that movie. Yeah, we need more fights. Although. That, although that was the best part of Evil uh, the part two, Rick and Part that's, Two. That's that's what I mean. Is although that might spice up the movie a little bit, where there's a lot more action beats, because that really was the best part of Breaking Dawn Part Two, was the big war scene. You know what I mean? No, the best part of that scene was Dakota Fanning getting fed to wolves. No, the best part of Breaking Dawn Part Two was ah! okay, right, that aside. That aside, Dakota Fanning eating fed to wolves. When I first saw that in theaters, I cheered. I mean, True. not like a, not like a weak, yeah, more like, like a chimpanzee making noise in a cage kind of cheering. <laughs> like, yes! Fuck that bitch! Yes! <laughs> what else, what, what else? Oh, Thor. Uh, Thor yeah. looks, Thor looks average. It looks... Well, there's nothing in the trailer really to... to... I, it looks they don't like tell us anything. It looks like every superhero movie ever. It, I, I was actually pretty high about it, but then I was watching it going like this. It, it looks like you know there's a bad guy, and then there's the girl in danger, and Thor's like no, and then it cuts to like Thor, and you're like eh. Well, well, to be fair, that I think that's the kind of angle that they wanted to take the Thor movies. They wanted to have like the sort of overly dramatic, very old timey kind of. You know, like a pantheon kind of story, and I could definitely see that working. I mean, 
I liked Thor enough when I saw it, but and I knew what it was trying to do. That's why I didn't get so you know eye rolling when it, when all of the uh, weird plot, like the the stale plot elements mm -hmm. of the story, you know, kind of popped up. I just wonder if they're ever going to justify the presence of uh, of Natalie Portman because she's like, I'm in this movie, and I'm like, why? And there's never an answer. <laughs> well, there's no, there's no, there's no Inception theme in Thor. Yet. Yet. <laughs> okay. So, it, why is there Inception in World War Z? Uh, there just is. Okay. No. No. Okay. Okay. Invalid URL. I'd like to offer. Didn't I put you in timeout? I did. Oh, because I are okay. Because of our, I'm not listening to you. No, you you are no. You're on my shit list. No, I'm, I refuse to listen to you. Okay, we've been putting this off enough because this movie hurt me. Ugh. After Earth, I'm not actually after. People are calling it After Earth. No, because the first thing I have to mention is the the accent. <laughs> this accent is impossible to quantify. I don't even know how to start. It it hits you front and center. Yeah, you, you have you have like you may have hopes that this may be because here's the thing is every, I've read a lot of online reviews and oh, you they, did. they already want to proclaim this worst movie ever. And no, I'm no, like, no, 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 no. Well, I don't know yet cause because. I because I think this is the Geely factor that they smell yeah, blood in the water yeah, right. with M Night Shyamalan, and they all want to pile on as the what's the most hyperbolic, worst ever thing they can say, and so you want to go in with an open mind and be like, yeah, I did oh, actually. That's what I mean. Is I I wasn't I I I didn't think it would be this bad. I really didn't. And we start off with a voiceover by Jaden. Smith? Uh, I don't remember who gave the... No, it is, it is it him. Is, okay, just, yeah, it is, it is, it is. I'm not confused about his name. Oh, uh, yeah, Jaden Smith, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's giving a voiceover, and you, you go, like, seriously? That's the voice you're going with? This yeah, movie? yeah, yeah, because you're like... And then he gives a whole five-minute voiceover of the history of what's going on. Because we were looking at each other going, Really? <laughs> what, what, Really? <laughs> Because it sounds, it sounds like he's doing buh wheat. Yeah, buh wheat. <laughs> but like, kind of an upper class buck wheat. <laughs> Doesn't that distort the concept of buck wheat? Uh, yes! But he's, like, it, it's like, uh, it's like buck wheat doing like upper class London. He's like, try that. Go hey. ahead, try it. Alright, uh, alright. Getting the upper class British accent. Yeah. Now do now do that doing buckwheat. <laughs> One, two, three times a mayday. <laughs> Not quite. Not quite. <laughs> but you're zoning in on it. He starts off like the the aliens came to Earth and they can smell fear and my daddy is it's a ghost. Okay, I'm doing more Bob Dylan buckwheat. It is, but they. It's not quite that. It's not quite that sing songy. It's it's really hard to replicate because it's so alien. And the thing is, I know why it, it's by intention, because, and I I know this was Shyamalan's intention, because I know this is so what he was going for, and I this is where the, this is his signature, because the whole point is. He's like, okay, these guys abandoned Earth like a thousand years ago, and so, like, culturally these guys are, like, all weirded out, you know? Like, the culture's all mixed together. So, like, they, you know, it's almost like, you remember Serenity or, like, Firefly, where, like, you know, they use, like, Chinese curse words, and so, you know, they're, they're kind of all culturally whacked out. So like, uh, so like they go, oh, well, their accent would be all kind of funky. So that's what they're going for. So they have this really weird, unidentifiable accent. So it's, it's kind of, so he like invented this accent that everyone has, right? 
It's so stupid. It's so dumb. So, like, he, like, he invented this dialect of English that everyone had to learn, and it's oh. so stupid. Because, like, now everyone had to learn this accent, and nobody has it consistent. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, I definitely know what So, like, means. one so, person... So, like, one person... we have a Robin Hood, Robin Hood kind of moment where people decide to put on British accents, but except for... But it's not British. Some, like, some people do it more British, and some people do it less. And, like, Jaden does it more like... Like, Jaden does it like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> And I want to be like my father, who's a ghost. And then uh, Will Smith does it more like. Who does uh, Will Smith do it more like? He's more southern, I think. Yeah, he does it more like southern. And then uh, uh, more people do it more like British. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it's really weird. Like some, like I saw one guy do it more like uh, South African. You know. So it's it's really funky like that. So like I know what he was going for. I know what Shyamalan was going for, but like he was just all over the map with it, and it was really, it was really really distracting. And it, instead of being like immersive and weird, okay, here's what he was going for. This is what he was going for. And here's where you had gotta like either like admire the balls on this guy or really just shake your head and pity the guy. He was going for a clockwork orange. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> he was going for the Droog dialect. And now I'm picturing Will Smith in that outfit. Older hat in that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean, uh, you know what I mean with, the, with the Droog dialect? Yeah, I know what the droop guy like, though. That was what he was going for. Uh, he was going for that accent, <clears throat> that that dialect. That I'm calling it. That's what he wanted. Guaranteed. Yeah. And oh my God, he so does not have the chops for that. <laughs> the biggest problem with oh, this. Please. The no. biggest problem with this movie, and we'll we'll expand on this, but just to make it like a bullet point, the biggest problem with this movie is that it's oh no 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 you can't call this the biggest problem I I, no, I guarantee I'm not you I'm calling I'm not calling that the biggest problem I'm saying what the biggest problem is oh no I will I will I will challenge you on whatever you say this is but okay. go ahead this movie is carried on two performances Will Smith and Jaden Smith you have to be caring about these people and their problems. And you have one person who's crippled on a ship and who is giving... It, he's almost like he's sworn off acting for Lent. <laughs> and you have, you have another person who is our main character whose acting range is two faces. One is pouting, and the other one is semi-crying, partly puking Oh face. my god, okay. I didn't want to do this, but go, go ahead. Finish, finish your thought. And so, uh, really, that's it. I mean, you're, you have to, it's, you, you, you have two actors that are supposed to carry the narrative thrust and the dramatic tension, and you, you're just bored by one and laughing at the other. <sighs> I don't like to do this. I really, I, 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 I didn't want to go here. Uh. But, because I don't like to... Just say it, just be brave, be brave. Jaden Smith sucks. Be brave and pick on a 14-year-old. He sucks. And really that's the, because if, if I'm going to sum up the movie, it's actually kind of... Unintentionally, this movie is actually very clever. It it it, it unintentionally is is kind of a work of art, dis, very much, despite itself. Like by accident, and purely by accident, despite itself. Like because this movie is about, um, this movie is about like uh, 
uh, a child who is thrust into a situation that he is completely unready for. He is thrust into a comp- uh, an overwhelming situation that he is that he is completely unprepared for. That that his dad that his father has is has unrealistic expectations for that he is unprepared for and that he should be completely overwhelmed by. Will Smith has has unrealistic expectations for his son. Has put him in this situation that he is going to be completely overwhelmed by and he's not ready for it. I don't want to bash on Jaden Smith because this kid tries his damnedest. He really does. I'm not trying to bash on this kid because he, he, he tries. I can tell he really tries. And I don't want to beat up on the kid because he's trying to please his father. You know, he, he's, trying, he, he's, he's trying to make his dad happy. You know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do this. He, 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 he's trying to make, you know, he wouldn't do this if he wasn't trying to make his dad happy. And that's the sad part about this movie. You know, he's doing this for his dad. You know, you know what I mean? He's not, he's not doing this because he thinks he's a great actor. You know, he's not doing this out of ego. He's doing this because his dad, he's trying to do this to make his dad proud. And he's just, he's not ready. Did you hear what, like, what Willow Smith backed up for the Annie remake because she just wanted to be a kid? Yeah. Like, even after, like, Jada Pinkett went on records, like, oh, she's just going to, resting for her comeback, that's why she backed out of the Annie role. It's like, what is with these fucking no. parents? Eric, Eric's in the, in the chat says he's doing it because his dad is giving him a bazillion dollars for this movie. No, his dad is telling him, his dad is telling him, you're ready. He's telling him, he's like, you can carry this movie. He says, you know, at least with the Karate Kid, you had the supreme likability of Jackie Chan to fall back on. But with After Earth, it's Will Smith going, you can do it. He's, like, he's, saying, he's saying, you can do this. You can, like, you can do this. You know, and he can't. You know, it's, it's not, and it's the thing is, it's not that he can't. It's that he can't right now. He needs experience. He needs work. And he just can't do it right now. He's not ready. And the thing is, any director worth his salt, and that's the key, any director worth his salt, and maybe he did need to do, yeah, you're actually uh, a great street guru. Maybe he did need to do this movie. Maybe he did need to do this movie because this really exposed him. Because... He's he's not ready. This movie, <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't help that Will isn't even there to to help him out. Because, yeah, because because his role, what what the story is, is that Will Smith is his name is Cipher Rage. Oh my God! And and he has uh, see, no 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 stop <laughs> stop. I'll let you have this. I gotta go. Stop. <laughs> Cyber rage. Some... You have to. S- <laughs> Steven Seagal's character never had names like that. Pump the brakes. Movie, stop. I have to. No. No. No, 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 no. no. Movie, you're drunk. No, no, no. no. Pull over. Uh, no, I'm going to finish. Right here. Shot. I, you know, I've never had Blue Label. Oh, do, 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 don't down blue label like a shot. Don't, I gotta sip it. You're supposed to save it. I got, okay, I gotta save it. You gotta save it. Hang on. I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna save it. Mm hmm. That's like a hundred bucks a bottle. Is it? Yeah. (laughs) Holy shit. Blue actually, it's expensive shit. You don't doubt, you don't take shots of it. You sit that shit. Actually, that has a decent taste because I had that Canadian Club shit. Mm-hmm. That's like paint thinner. Yeah. This actually has a decent taste. Yeah, like that's the difference between like bottom shelf whiskey and good whiskey. Good whiskey has flavor, has aftertaste. Has no bottom. kidding. No kidding. Bottom shelf is like nail polish remover. Okay. Anyway. 
Will Smith's character's name is Cypher Rage. I still maintain that Steven Seagal never reached that level of ridiculous names in his movies. Cypher Rage. Cypher Rage. Cypher Rage. No, 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 no. Not, not spelled like Cypher from Final Fantasy VIII. No, no, Cypher no. spelled like C Y P H E R. Cypher right? Rage. Yes, they were serious. Because they, he says it a lot too. He goes, hey, "This is General Cipher Rage," and nobody laughs at this. Ugh. His mother, <laughs> Mrs. Rage, Mrs. Rage. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Ray, <laughs> can Cypher come out and play? <laughs> His mother, Inferno Rage. <laughs> Carol Rage. Carol Rage. <laughs> His dad, Fred Rage. <laughs> Boy Rage. <laughs> Boyd. <laughs> and his brother, Yancey Rage. Chauncey Rage. <laughs> Chocolate Rage. Chocolate <laughs> Rage. <laughs> Cypher Rage Jr. No, 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 no. His name is, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Katai. Katai Rage. That's the only way you say it. His name should have been Anger. <laughs> Anger Rage. Anger Rage. <laughs> Quiet Rage. Adamantium. <laughs> oh yeah, we're cousins to the Mad Family. <laughs> Mad Rage. <laughs> <laughs> Cypher Rage! Yancey Rage! <laughs> Will Smith. Will Smith wrote this. For himself. Rage. He wrote this for himself. You know, there's a movie called Southland Tales. That movie sucks, by the way. But there's a line that I always loved where The Rock is talking about a movie that he's in. That he's it, it he's he plays this really foppish, stupid actor that he's talking about don't don't give Oreo blue label. <laughs> For a moment there, Oreo was the fanciest dog who ever lived. The Rock is talking about this role that he's in, about this really dopey movie that he's in. About how the earth is you know, he, he plays this cop who's on the edge, and his name is Jericho Kane. You know, it's it's basically like Casey Ryback or Forrest Taft. I'm telling you, like I'm looking at Steven Seagal's entire list of names for characters he's, in movies he's been in. His, These are great. In the one in his TV show, it's Elijah Kane, John Fist. Roland Salinger. Jason Blade. Jonathan Cole. Red Stigface. Rock mm. McFistface. Rex Colt. Beef McGoodbody. Jericho Kane. But yeah, I have never heard in my life an actual movie character named Cypher Rage. If you actually, I was I was telling Miles this. If you brought, like, if we were playing an RPG, a tabletop RPG, 
and you brought me a character named Cypher Rage, I would laugh you out of the room. <laughs> like, if you brought me a Shadowrun character named Cypher Rage, I'd be like... <laughs> I was more confused by, by Cypher's wife's name. Yeah, it sounded like failure. <laughs> it, she's like, Faya, yeah. He... It, it's failure like your rage. It was like, yeah, yeah. It's just like Flayla. Failure. Failure. He says it like three times when I'm still. I'm, Hello, my wife. Flayla. Failure. I thought it. Failure. Failure. According to IMDb, failure. Faya rage. I I heard failure. I heard failure. Failure rage. Bob rage. Failure Rage, Sorcerer of Light. Bob Rage, I'm a CPA. <laughs> Fanny Rage. <sighs> anyway. We're not even into this movie yet. Will Smith is, is a ghost. He, no, 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 he's a ranger who, oh. who can ghost. Here's these aliens that can only attack because they okay, no, smell no, 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 you're getting mixed up. Aliens attack the Earth. No, okay, no, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Humanity has destroyed the Earth. The aliens did not destroy the Earth. This is a sequel to The Happening. Yes, this is, this, no, this, this actually might be. Humanity has destroyed the Earth because they bitch slap us right from the beginning. That humanity has, this is not the aliens' fault. Humanity has destroyed the Earth because of overpollution. We fucked this up. Oh, hang on. Wow, we got some uh, spammers here. Well, hang on. I gotta d deal with some spammers. Goodbye. Sorry, got some spammers. Okay, so you can't even blame this on the aliens. We fucked it up. Okay. Okay. No, we can't actually kill these aliens with water. They, their weakness, actually, their weakness might be might be even dumber. It could be. Okay, so we over polluted the earth, and we fucked it up. Then the aliens attacked to kick us when we're down. Okay. Now we don't have this game right here. I know. Okay. Okay, so the, just to kick us when we're down, the aliens invade us. But they don't, I don't think they attack us directly. They breed monsters to attack us. The monsters they breed to attack us, they hunt us, and the only way they can see us is they see us by seeing our fear. They see the pheromones that we secrete from our fear reflex. The Ursas. The, well, that's one of them, right. I think. The Ursas. Okay, so... <laughs> they can see our fear. So... Humanity has developed a fighting force to hunt them called the Rangers, who, do, who have, uh, who do, do not fear, who have trained the, who have trained the, uh, fear instinct out of them, okay? So basically they're Green Lanterns. Yeah. They've overcome fear. They've overcome fear. So, because fear is a choice, that's the tagline for the movie, okay? Only so a smart choice. So, Cypher Rage... Does not fear, and uh, uh, and uh, Jaden Smith is his son, and he fears, so he has to overcome his fear, and that's the that's the arc of the movie. Okay, but the problem is, is okay, Cipher cannot fear, but that somehow means he's now a Vulcan and doesn't have any personality <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, apparently, no fear means he has no emotions; he has no expressions to speak of. 
Seriously. He gives a, a monologue. I will now... I, actually, you go ahead, and I will just sit here, and I, I will give Will Smith's entire performance for you live. Well, a few times we get dramatic performance here. Okay. You want to know how I learned to stop fearing? I ran into an Ursa. <laughs> this looks like a Christian rock album cover. <laughs> I was on a run when I shouldn't have. <laughs> And I was attacked. Okay, no wonder it looked herself. like you're watching a woman take a dump. It knocked me down. <laughs> and we fell 30 meters. <laughs> and I realized he was holding me under the water to drown me. And that's when I realized I just didn't care anymore. And so I pulled my spike out and I stabbed him. Yeah, I, you see me. You're not doing it right. You're not you're not doing it right. <laughs> He's ser he seriously he never changes expressions, because, like, he seriously gives this monologue for, like... Every five words to pause. D he tells that story. It, we fell 30 meters. He tells that story about his, fr like, how he was able to... How he was o able to overcome his fear for, like, five... It was, like, five minutes. He couldn't see me anymore. Yeah. Because, like, he's... And then I was able to strike. No, let, let me tell it, because you're not telling it right. <coughs> I was on Earth. And then I saw it. It came over the hill. And it smelled my fear. And I was so afraid. And it... It stabbed me in the shoulder. And we fell off the cliff. And I realized it was trying to drown me. I saw my blood and I realized I wasn't afraid anymore. You can't be afraid, son. You can't be afraid. is the fact that we can only see like the top half of your face so like your mouth is completely covered <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you watch it again it's gonna be great this is one of the longest scenes and it, it ends with, actually I'm with sorry Jaden falling asleep actually so I'm sorry because I was seeing my face on the camcorder I wasn't seeing it on the webcam so like it's it's much better on the on the on the camcorder, so you, you'll get you'll get the actual performance on the webcam on the on the camcorder. No, no, I like the webcam better because it just looks like you just see your eyes just kind of <laughs> staring to your soul. <laughs> <laughs> it worked for you still. It worked. Okay. But this scene ends with Jaden falling asleep, and I was like, yeah, that's a good parallel for the audience. There's so many times because Will Smith. Literally falls asleep while talking. <laughs> he does. I swear to God, he, he's, he's like, 
He's like, you can't be afraid. I'm like, oh my god. But that's even without the blood loss. That's yeah. We we were looking at each other in the theater because we were doing the Will Smith impression. And it's it's just if you died sitting up and you just had no emotion left. You, you just if you were to freeze, weekend and Bernie style, it just He's oh. he's so boring. He he like passes out from it like he's he's losing blood, but like it's that's not why he passes out. He's just like Oh and like, it's, He's just a boring fuck. It's, During that entire take, I was expecting like you to talk I was expecting you to go into how Amy the Brain escaped Shawshank prison. It's it, like and you think I'm kidding about how long that take is and how like no, that's like one take, one story. That's what that take was. And it put us all to sleep. That was the take. That was the story. I am not shitting you. That was it. Th I am... I am so serious. You know, instead of training people to not fear because of pheromones being released, couldn't we just have soldiers in, like, biohazard suits? <sighs> Okay, so I haven't even gotten to, like, these monsters who can see fear. Alright. Okay. Knight of Spades, shut the fuck up. Deal with it. Okay. These, these monsters who can see fear, they can... Uh, if you haven't gotten this by now, they can only see fear. Okay? They, they can see... How do they see fear? They see the pheromones that you, ex, that you <clears throat> excrete. They, they can see the scent of fear, okay? Just, but that's, that's all they can see, okay? So... so because... Judge jumps. Do they sense the fear of, like, the thing they're about to jump onto so they know how hard to jump? So... Yeah, so... So that's how the rangers, they're invisible to them because they don't fear. Okay, so, and the, the aliens bred them this way to hunt humans, which is way more efficient than just breeding them to see the visual spectrum of light. Sure! But these Be rangers also have double-sided your things. No, 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 don't go, don't go, because the visual spectrum of light is so unreliable than, than seeing the fear pheromones. No, that's, we couldn't, we couldn't have them do both. No, the, the fear pheromones, that's, that's, that's what we're like, you know, infrared, ultraviolet, no, 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 fear. Let's just stop there. That, that's it. Apparently, I would have fucked up the blueprints. No, no, no. We're just, we're just gonna end it there. Apparently, these monsters also have no short-term, like exactly no short-term memory, because this thing is literally straddling Jaden Smith. Then he stops fearing, and the monster's like, "What? Where? Who? Huh? Well, it's gone. Huh?" And then, like, it, it, he has no, he has no clue. So instead of instead of wearing biohazard suits, like you said. No, they have to learn how to stop fearing. They have to go into a zen state. Or, you know, and then... Go ahead. They have these double-sided spears that shoot out blades on both ends. But this is the future. Why don't we have, like, guns? No, they don't have guns in the future. This is supposed to be about a thousand years later. Why don't we have phasers or some shit? No. The guns would be cheating. Or they don't have robots. No robots to fight them. That wouldn't be fair. And by the way, this ship has everything. Everything on it. Except more than one fucking emergency beacon. Look at it. This ship. They crashed the ship, okay? And this, by the way, was bullshit. Okay. 
the ship, they, 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 they're, they're going somewhere. I don't know the fuck where. They get caught in an asteroid storm. And the tail of the section gets torn off. And this is right away where things get bullshit. So, they're like, okay, so Will Smith, he tells his son to strap in, and then the tail section gets torn off. And then Will gets sucked out the tail section of the ship. That scene in the trailer. Yeah, it's the scene in the trailer where Will gets sucked out the tail section, ship crashes. So, Jaden, he wakes up and he's like, oh, Dad! Dad! He gets up, and then he, he goes like ten feet away, and there's Will, then there's his dad. And you're like, wait a second. He got sucked out the tail section. He's right there. What? How? Like, we, no, we just, like, we saw him, like. I'm Cypher Rage, lol. Yeah, he's, like, he's Cypher Rage. Apparently he, like, like, shouldn't he be with the tail section? Like, that makes no sense. Like, he should be with. In fact, you wonder, like, if he should be, uh, if in another cut, uh, like, if in another edit of the script, he should be with the tail section, and he's trying to, like, if he's trying to talk him to the tail section. If I hadn't known there was no Shyamalan twist in this, I would have thought that, that Will Smith was just the mental reconstruction by Jaden. That's what I thought! <clears throat> guiding him through, and then, you know, once he... Gets the beacon and people come rescue him. He'd be like, "Where's my dad?" And he's like, "That's what I thought." Be like, "General Cipher Rage died three days ago." What? That's what I thought. If there was a twist, that's what I thought it was. Was like he he wakes up in the, in the wreckage and he like hears a signal on the radio and he's like, "Dad, dad!" And he's like, "Yes, I I'm in the tail section. You gotta come get me. I have a I have an emergency beacon." And he, like, he goes to the tail section, and he finds the beacon, and he finds his dad, but his dad's been dead for days. And he's like, ah! And he, like, he's been internalizing his dad, but he's made his dad proud because he internalized all his lessons and stuff like that. That's exactly what I thought. <coughs> and in fact, I bet in an earlier cut of the script, that's what happened. But, yeah. That would have made so much more sense in the script, and I bet in an earlier draft of the script that's what happened, because it makes so much more sense. But no, like somehow he's in the head section of the of the ship now, even though he got sucked out with the tail section. I don't he got know. Sucked out to get sucked back in. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow I just made a better twist than Shyamalan did. From what I hear, that this was actually supposed to be a Will Smith story that M Night Shyamalan touched up. Because that's exactly who you want to punch up your script and like shamble. Okay. So, back to the ship. But it begs the question, if he has to go to the tail section to get this magical distress signal which can shoot across the galaxy. This thing is amazing, by the this way. This thing is amazing because it sends a shockwave through the galaxy. You yeah. see it. It's this blue wave this that thing, shoots out. This thing shoots a beacon bigger than the Earth. <laughs> it's this supernova that shoots out across the galaxy and you see it. Okay, why didn't they just send that distress signal before mm. when they were crashing? They could have done this at any time they were crashing. They could have been like, boop, <laughs> No, no. Because, no, they seriously had, like, ten minutes before they started crashing to, like, pick this thing up out of the wall and then, like, boop, <coughs> boop. No, they're like, they could have sent a signal any time. Before this, no, of course not. They could, they, they could have sent this thing. They could have like broadcast the location at any time. No, now let's just land. Of course not. We can't. The press. <laughs> Can I tell you that that is one of the worst running gags in your show? Is it? <laughs> yes. You don't like that? It wasn't the. It wasn't funny the first time. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, but this ship, this ship has everything except multiple distress beacons. Because, like, so he's like, you gotta go to the tail sector of the ship. It's got the only other distress beacon. But he's like, okay, so we got this thing. But everything else works. 
So he's got this he's got this scanner that can detect that his leg is broken. And by the way, it's like, oh, you need an arterial shunt. And it tells him how to use it. And it's like, so he has these, he, by, he also has these, uh, these probes that, you remember those probes that launch out the hull? Like these camera probes that are like all over the exterior of the ship. Remember those like, they're like all over this, the exterior of the ship. Like he hits this, there's like one button. He like hits the button and like the entire exterior of the ship, they're like these little, like, like uh, starfish robots that like detach and they like fly all over the place. And they... Apparently in the future we've become more like Lex because we have a bug ship and starfish sensors and yeah. skin doors. And I can't believe I had to reference Lex. But, but there the, we go. the ship is covered in them. Like just waiting for this one opportunity to like boop. <laughs> and so they like cover the planet in these really convenient cameras so that so that Will Smith can watch him go all over the place cuz that you know this one circumstance that we need them he has them right so he has these and and the uh, the the air filtration uh, uh, birth control canisters that he has you know we only have these six in this section of the plane but in the tail section we have a whole dozen of them in this one cuz you know, this one time we land on Earth, oh, we're going to need a whole lot of these. You know, this one circumstance we land on Earth, we're going to need a lot of these. So, you know, like, this whole ship is, like, really specifically outfitted for this one time we land on Earth, you know? Um, the, the first aid kit that they... The, the first aid kit that he takes with him, there's, like, three things in it, you know? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like the anti-toxin kit that he brings with him. Yeah. Keep in mind, the ship was not meant to go to Earth. No, it's not. It's not going, at all. It, this, this is just survival gear for wherever you land. And so Jaden's walking around and he gets this little leech on his hand that releases this a toxin. Little, yeah, this little slug on his hand. And so he's he's his father senses that there's toxin in him and he's like... Son, you've got to get the antitoxin out. So he pulls off his backpack, and in his backpack, there's literally three things this in there. This huge backpack! There's three things in there. One is an air breather kit. One is like a little med pack thing. Like this big. And then the third thing are three needles specifically titled antitoxin. Needle one, needle two. And I guess... They brought specific antitoxin for this little thing that's on Earth. Yeah. And lucky they picked that one because, like, yeah, this specific antitoxin for this one slug on Earth. Because, like, yeah, they, they got that one. This whole backpack for those two needles. He pops that fucker open and, wow, lucky him because... You needed that whole backpack for that. It jacks that in there. It works out great. Because you needed that whole backpack for that. And the, I don't even know how he damaged those, those little air filtration things. They just were broken when he got them. Well, what else was in there? The Like that whole backpack for the air filter? Mini air, uh, little mini med kit. It's like the size of a little Kleenex travel Kleenex tissue packet. But it was the air filtration and the antitoxin, that was it. And the little med kit. There's, there's two, there's the little needles for the antitoxin and that the whole, med kit. That whole thing for that. Yes. Shit. No gun. No, like, no, nothing to start a fire. No food. That was another thing that killed me about that. No food. They talked, there was that whole thing about air. And there was, like, no mention of food or water. He never carried a canteen with him. He never carried any kind of, like, hard rations. And that was another thing that bothered me about this. Like, they, they put so much emphasis on air. Like, you need to bring these... 
You need to bring these air filtration canisters to coat your lungs to breathe or you'll die. And so, no, they were like, you, you need, because you'll die, man, if you don't have enough of these. Because they were measuring it by minutes. They're like, if you don't have this, because we're measuring it by minutes, you'll die, man. And so, like, because, you know, he ran out and he was like, <laughs> and so, like, it was like total recall, you know. Um, so, like, yeah. Um, so, like, but I was like, why is the air so bad? Because if you look around on this planet, it's Earth, and you're like, okay, well, Earth got fucked up. The environment's so fucked up. But if you look around, it's beautiful. Like, the, no, the environment's great. You know what I mean? Like, it's all green and lush, and there's, like, never, there has never been better environment, like, it, it's, Earth has completely changed too. It's never it? been greener and more beautiful. There's ever. like a cliff that's fifty thousand feet tall that you can paraglide off of, and oh. the entire landscape of Earth has changed. I was about to ask about that. I heard that the like little uh, Jade in here has like a special suit that shifts to whatever the situation calls for it, and he never uses it again. Yeah, apparently, like for some reason, it's like Solid Snake's camo in. In Metal Gear Solid 4, that kind of it phases to match the environment, but he never gets any use out of it. Like, he even comments, he's like, oh, my suit's turned, like, black. And he's like, it's cool, but I don't know what it means. And he's like, oh, it's because it's detected motion. And he's like, but he never gets any use out of it. He never uses it for camouflage. And especially since the aliens smell fear, so what? <laughs> Whatever. You know, um, but yeah, the air is supposed to be bad, but there's like, it's, it's never been a more optimal environment for good oxygen. I don't get that at all. Um, um, the other thing is like the, uh, the, the earth apparently for some reason freezes over nightly. Did you understand that at all? No. The, yeah. Apparently every night the earth like hard freezes. Like, completely freezes solid. Because what's did, that ozone layer did for? You, did you hear <laughs> that? Did you hear that at all? Hear what? That the Earth freezes every night in this movie? Yeah, I've, I heard that quite clearly. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking in my head how that works. Like, is the ozone layer depleted? Is it, it, no, is no, it almost well, knocked no. off its orbit? I don't know. Okay, no, okay, that's, no, that's not possible. And it's there's enough ozone that there's like tropical rainforests yeah. all over the planet. No, because so, if that was the case, if the Earth freezes, there wouldn't be any plant life. And there's like the the Earth is covered in vegetation, which is why it makes no sense. Uh, and, and plus, if they try to make the argument, well, these plants have evolved on this Earth that freezes over every night, then... but it doesn't because these are jungle. This is like tropical plant life. And no, it's, and I'm looking at the trailer, and then the they have a bunch of animals that apparently adapted for the harsh environment, I think. But again, they haven't, because it's really just like, there's baboons. Like, so if baboons can live on this earth, and not humans, like, like what, do the baboons evolve gills? That's how they can breathe the supposedly toxic air? There's baboons and giant eagles... And buffalo. and buffalo, and there's whales, and uh, uh, what else? There's like mountain lions, or lions, or whatever. And Where the hell are they supposed to be? Where you can find buffalo, mountain lions, whales in the same general vicinity? I don't know. And th that was another funny line that Will Smith says. He's like, "Everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans, like the buffalo." Buffalo kill you. Like that would be that actually would have been an interesting movie if the Buffalo had like seen Jaden Smith and were like motherfucker and like came after him. Cause that actually would have been an interesting movie if seriously everything on Earth had evolved to kill him. But it was actually kind of docile, you know, kind of a docile planet where not everything like very few things had evolved to kill him. In fact, there was this one time where the baboons had, like, there was a baboon looking at him, and, like, Will Smith was like, don't do anything. 
and then Jaden threw a fucking rock at him, which pissed the baboons off. I guess I I wasn't feeling tension for yet another reason, and just to compare, look at a movie like The Edge. Yeah. It's about three city folk that get trapped in Alaska, and there's a fucking bear that wants to kill them. Yeah. That's something that you know. You know what a bear is, you know what a bear does, you know what it can do, and so... You're right along with them as you're trying to figure out, do we run? Do we make little spikes or spears and do this and that? You can understand what they're going through. In this movie, it's just whatever. It's just coming up with whatever at whatever time. It's just making things up as you go along. Like the the toxin thing. Jaden just gets this slug on him and it has toxins. Oh no, what do I do? Oh, conveniently in your backpack, there's two needles that you can stick in. That's antitoxin. Yeah, there's tension, tension over. There's never any moment where he's forced to do anything to survive. Because, like, you'd think there'd be this moment where he'd have, to, he'd have to rely on his ranger training to survive. But there's never any moment where he has to do anything like... Yeah, you know, there's... there's... Never are you really made aware of a threat and then... With the character as he tries to figure out how to deal with that problem. This is where you have to get, like, gritty and almost, like, really dark. Where he has to do stuff that's really, really unpleasant to survive. You know what I mean? Like, has to do, like, really gross stuff. Like Han cutting open the tom talk. Yeah, yeah. And instead we're doing, like, this really kind of Disney bullshit where, like, an eagle sacrifices itself to, like, keep him warm. It's, like, really stupid. Drink really? his pee. <laughs> Looks like you're going to have to drink my pee. I was thinking that they were going to do something like the Tauntaun because they make this big deal out of you got to get to the hot springs every night, otherwise you're going to freeze over. And I think <laughs> one, one No, part, they do that, seriously. They do. And I figured one part would be he's he can't get to one of these hot spots in time, so he's got to like gut open a, a buffalo like and a bear, crawl inside. Yeah. But no, no, he just always conveniently finds one. Well, what's goofy is they never even established the fact that the Earth freezes over until like the very very end of the movie. Like, so we never even established that there's any real kind of danger until like the last fifteen minutes of the film. You know? Because it would have been really handy to establish the urgency of him reaching these these thermal hot spots. Because it's very, very important or he'll die. You know? But no, they don't they don't do that, so we there's no sense of urgency until the very, very end of the film, and then it's too late. You know, we don't care. But the even so the science of it, and I know I'm, I'm calling science on, the, on, on this essentially bullshit movie anyway, but it's, it's, even then it's so completely implausible that it's just unbelievable. That you're, you're, you're expecting us to believe this environmentally destroyed planet that when we get there is beautiful. There's, there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't move back there today. This planet is fine. There's nothing, there's no reason we couldn't go back there today. Okay, there's giant eagles and mountain lions. So what? People are getting fi- by fine in Fallout 3, but jungles with mountain calves, no. no. I, I think we can deal with mountain lions. Okay, like really. <laughs> Even in this buff- future with no guns, we can take care of the mountain lions. We'll just open up our jackets and make ourselves look big. Like, like, oh shit, there's buffalo. How will we cope? Yeah. Well, I'm afraid of the birdemic there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was, that, that was like another missed opportunity because there was like a birdemic there. Like with the giant eagles? There was one giant eagle, but I'm expecting a lot of eagles to kill Becky. No, but there was a moment where he's like on a cliff and you see all these birds. Right? You saw this big swell of birds, and I was like, I was thinking there was always like everything on this planet's evolved to kill you. I was like, I I was seriously thinking like, here's where he gets attacked by all these birds because they've all evolved to kill him. No, 
No. Because that would have been a great time for the birdemic. <laughs> no. Oh, somebody somebody in the in the chat room mentioned Gandalf. Funny you should mention that. Because when he reaches the tail section of the spacecraft, he finds the second beacon. And guess what? It doesn't fucking work! Why? Because he gets no signal. <laughs> no shit! He gets there, and he holds the beacon up, and he's like, By the power of Grayskull! <laughs> he holds it up like that. He's like, Ah, Grayskull! And he's like, No signal. What the... Like, it's an iPhone 4. <laughs> this well, thing gets, said... like, less signal than an iPhone 4. He's like, Ah! No signal. Fuck! I said in the theater... Wait, 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 wait. This is a beacon. Isn't it supposed to broadcast a signal? You'd fucking think! <laughs> what? It's supposed to create its own signal. He gets no bars. <laughs> I said out loud in the theater, all the tedium of looking for a for a signal on your cell phone splashed across the big screen. No, no, because in the future, the beacons run on AT and T. Or oh god, we're in a tunnel. Damn five it! Minutes, five minutes of him in this movie is just him going around. I swear. Like, no, he really got, does. He really does. He really does. He's like, got this phone, and he's doing this. He's like, I got a bar. Can I get two? Can no, I get two? No, two. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh shit. And he, he really oh. is. He's like. Wait, 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 wait. I think I get wireless, but oh, damn it. Verizon wants to charge me two forty nine a minute. No, and, and, no, TV's Frank. Son, I need you to find a hill or something. Yes. He literally says that. Yes, he does. I am so, not shitting so, you. So the so the the huge climax of this movie is Jaden Smith finding a hill. Yes. Yeah. Except. It can't, it can't be Hollywood enough just to get a hill. Here's, no, he's got to climb a mountain out of Mordor. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Here's the funny thing. I called this. I called this. Okay, so he goes, the ship, it's in front of Mount Doom. It is. And so, like, he, I have Sauron and everything. It, yes! It is! It, there is an Eye of Sauron. Yes! Yes! <laughs> it's like the, there's the ship, okay? Imagine this crashed ship, and then, like, immediately behind it, Mount Doom! Like, there's a fucking mountain of fire with, like, lava? And like smoke billowing up and like rivers of fire and like a tower of like uh of uh Minas Morgul and like there's a fucking there like you can see Isildur and like uh uh Elrond like they're fighting over a ring and like Yeah and you don't fucking believe me? Tell him. There's a there's a volcano. There's a <laughs> it's not doom. I swear to God, it's less not drunk doom. Person. And there's there's a fucking Balrog. No, because he goes up there and there's a monster. He, go, he faces the Ursa. He goes up there and there's a monster. He goes up there, because there's a giant eagle, and there's a monster. It's Mount Doom. So he goes up there, and he's looking for a fucking signal on top of Mount Doom. I swear to Christ. So he has to fight the monster. And he, he, he finally decides... He, he finally, discovers his inner blandness. He, he finally discovers how to become complete wood. And he does this, and he kills the monster... And then he he finally gets a uh, he finally gets a bar, and he she, 
Like, finally, when he gets, like, a signal, he shoots the beacon, like, the... He, he can't just say, oh, I've sent the beacon. No. no it's, it's, it's it shoots this, a laser that fucking... It's this Highlander 2 laser beam that's this <laughs> pure white that shoots up into space. And it, then it, it, like, punches through the moon. And then... <laughs> It then blows up in this supernova ring. Which you can see out. it. You can see it from fucking Pluto. <laughs> people can't just believe that radio signals travel. Through no, space. yeah, yeah. It no, wouldn't be cinematic. A, yeah, we need a blue ring that shoots across the galaxy. Yeah. Because <laughs> like <laughs> this future sucks. There's earlier in the movie that. Uh, a soldier wants to thank Will Smith. Thanks for, wants to thank Cypher Rage because. He's oh my him. God! And and he's in this wheelchair and he's like, "Stand me up!" Yeah, he's yeah. only got one leg. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Stand me up! Yeah, yeah. Because he wants to salute Cypher Rage because he like he saved him from like a fucking cave troll or something like that. So he's like he's like, "Sir, I want to thank you for saving me from a cave troll." And he's got like one leg. Okay, so he gotta go. He's like. He's got, he's got one leg because in the future we don't have prosthetic legs. Yeah, this future sucks. There's no prosthetic legs. There's not even a peg leg for this poor bastard. Yeah. It's like Avatar. Right? <laughs> oh. So, yeah. Fantastic future and he's wheelchair bound still. Not even a future wheelchair. He's the push, lame kind of push kind. There's no guns. There's no fight people with sticks. <laughs> There's no guns in the future. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention this. What the fuck is with it in this future where everything is like, everything is made out of canvas? Did you notice that? Because their ships are made of bugs or something. Their, their ships are made of fucking canvas. Why? I, I, I can't even explain this. Where like everything is made out of cloth. Yeah, I... If it sounds stupid, you're like, what? Yeah. It's like their buildings are made out of cloth. It's like, okay, okay, so I'll, I'll let me explain. I'll try. So, like, Jaden Smith finds the, finds the tail section of the ship in front of Mount Doom. And you think I'm fucking kidding about that? It's Mount Doom! So, like, he finds the fucking tail section of the spaceship. And it's like, it looks like a spaceship, but... It looks like a spaceship covered in toilet paper. It looks like someone TP'd a spaceship. Doesn't it? Yeah. So I, it's a mummy spaceship, basically. No, it doesn't look like a mummy spaceship. It looks like someone TP'd a spaceship. Like I said, it's this strange... I'm not going to use Lex because that's terrible. No one's but it's like Farscape, where it's a living ship. And so the doors are like this skin, and and everything mm -hmm. is, is kind of organic about it. It's not organic. It's toilet paper. It's like like if it was organic, then like what the what's the idea of like the the tail of the ship going out and getting blown out into space, blown out into the planet rather. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And they keep you know what it's, the other thing is like it's weird like um. There's a lot of this thing where, like, it, I didn't want to call it at first because I was like, I was trying to give this movie some credit. I really was. But this movie rips off Lost. A lot. Wait, you're talking about J.J. Abrams' Lost, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, a lot. Was it, Is there a mysterious smoke monster? No, but, like... The, well, not only does the fact that there's, like, a plane crash... I didn't see Lost, so you're gonna have to go on. No, like, no, there's, like, a plane crash. The tail section gets ripped off. Okay. And the fact that they keep falling back on flashbacks. Okay. Yeah. There's okay. repeated flashbacks. You're not seeing it? I'm seeing that so far, just me? No? Okay. Just me. Just me. All right. The fact it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> the fact it doesn't make sense. I don't know. If Michelle Rodriguez was in the movie, then I'd be more inclined to believe you. 
So I'm waking up in the middle of nowhere after falling from a plane. The, the, the tail section is what clinched it for me. In fact, well, what's funny was, after the tail section got uh, ripped off, it cuts to black. I was really, like, half expecting the word lost to, like, come zooming in from the blackness, because I was like, Ooh. Oh, that would have been awesome. Mr. Echo was in the tail section. <laughs> you know what was really funny was when, um, uh, before the plane crash, or the spaceship crash, there was this... There was this moment where um, the the kid goes into the tail section of the plane because for some stupid reason they were transporting one of the alien eggs, like this giant fuck off alien egg, right? In the, really bad green screen, by the way. Yeah, no. The, actually, the some of the special effects were were good. No. <laughs> uh, hang on. Some A handful. Were- some of them were good. No. <laughs> but then you'd have some of the worst green screen effects. None of them were good. Like, anything where the humans weren't involved, <laughs> it was good. No. <laughs> but there was specifically a scene before they're launching the ship. And they're in this, this hangar bay, which is part cave, part hangar bay. And the, the characters are all moving through it. And it's... I was having, like, prequel flashbacks because it's that horrible green screen effect where it's just the character standing front and center and you see the outline and all this stuff is happening behind them. It's just horribly rendered. I like the guy who was just standing stock still with that stupid, like, the, that guy who was just standing perfectly still with that stupid spear in front of his groin. Is he part of the rendered background? I don't know. He was just like, I don't know why, he was just distracting the hell out of me. I liked when they're flying the ship and Cypher goes up to see what's wrong. And he's talking with one of the pilots who's doing all the... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the guy was doing, like, he's like doing all the spaceship acting. Where he's like, ship, boop, boop, yeah. boop, boop. And, and it, it does this shot where it cuts across to the two And there was this, this, this one guy who was just like, uh... Oh, oh by the way, uh... Geek Juice Gaming Live, after they set off the beacon, movie ends. What? Pretty much. Movie just fucking ends, doesn't yeah. it? After they set off yeah. the beacon, yeah, movie's over. Yeah, they like they, they, they take Cypher Rage. <laughs> they take Cypher Rage to a hospital, movie's over. They never even they never even deal with the aliens. In fact, they never even mention the aliens. Well, I was reading that they were thinking of making this into a series. <laughs> That's why there's so. Much I think the, the 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 biggest problem in this film is the fact that they set up the aliens to be this big threat. I mean, they bred basically biological weapons to attack humans out of fear. You never <laughs> see one of them, do you? No. You never see one of the aliens that's actually created this biological threat. No, they just. They build these aliens and then they just they just fuck off. They do like what? You never see an alien. You didn't see the monsters they build, but they like like you never like what do the aliens want? Like maybe they're the aliens from Signs and they kind of learned their lesson the first time, so they're not even going to bother with her. That would be so great if like they were the same aliens and. They were- <laughs> Like, if they were all the same universe? <laughs> like, all of M. Night Shyamalan's movies are in the same. Yeah, like Stephen King. Well, this is already the sequel to that happening. Earth kicked us out of its planet. Wait, 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 wait. If, th- if this were true, then how can Bruce Willis both be dead and a superhero at the same time? No, they're different characters. It's just, you know. <laughs> nice save. But, you know, I mean, like, uh, like, uh,. There's it's like the Corks universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, uh, like, uh, uh, you have uh, Jason Lee, who's the guy from Mall Rats, and yeah. also the guy from uh, Chasing Amy. Yeah. Yeah. So you have two Bruce Willises in this universe. One Bruce Willis is more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna ask. I'm just gonna ask the question on the hierarchy of M Night Shyamalan bad films. Where does this place? Oh. Uh. <laughs> Well, there's actually two hierarchies because there's bad 
bad, 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 funny. In which case, the happening is the worst and bad, funny. Um, I'm just seeing whether this is worse than. <sighs> like to me, Lady in the Water is more insulting. Because uh, I'm I'm with you on that one. Because look, Lady in the Water can't even be enjoyed ironically. Lady in yeah, the Water is just, that's is, is insufferable. That's insulting to me. And where this one is boring. This one is fucking boring. All right, last air, all right, last Airbender. I'll give a kind of a pass to because I didn't grow up with the Nickelodeon series, so I'm not insulted by how it didn't keep to like the series, the faithful to the series. And let's face it, watching kids try to act in that movie was kind of funny in of itself. Um, let me think. It's 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 actually hard for me to judge because this one's fresh in my memory. But let me think. Uh, I'm trying to think of like. Uh, Last Airbender was more funny bad. That one was really bad, though. Mm-hmm. Earth Shield. Oh, God, that movie sucked. God damn it, that movie sucked. Um, Lady in the Water hurt really fucking bad. Mm-hmm. The Village hurt. Really, okay. well, the village was more stupid than anything. The village anything. was pretty fucking stupid. Okay, if we're talking funny bad or bad bad, yeah. this, is, this is the worst bad bad movie that he's done. Really, we're bad bad. Well, okay, what's what's okay? What are we talking bad bad? Like, name the other bad bad movies. That he's Lady, in the water. Lady in the Water. Worse than Lady in the Water. Yeah, I can't go this is far. this is worse than Lady in the Water. Uh, I don't know because this is worse. Because uh, Lady in the Lady in the Water has that angle of M Night Shyamalan just trying to be the Messiah figure. No, this is more boring than Lady in the Water. I would I would take I would take Lady in the Water because this is more boring. See, I, I can't take two hours of M Night going. You guys don't understand my movie magic. I would I would rather be, yeah. This is this. That scene where where that that seriously like ten minute scene. You people can't get over this. I don't you, you you're just blinding yourself. I'm I'm really the I'm the best director and dude, you just guys can't get into the magic. Totally, dude. I'll, I'd rather be bored than be fucking pissed off. Dude, if I made you sit through that scene again where Cypher Rage is talking about where he was drowning in that fucking river again. That took ten minutes. Well, it's going to be my new NyQuil. I mean, it, I've, I've had other movies that when I have problems sleeping that I turn on. I mean, boring is bad, but if you're trying to j- gauge a movie's badness by eliciting a negative emotion, then getting angry and getting fucking pissed off has to at least, you know, Puts, push the needle to the other end of the spectrum. You know what I mean? Lady, Lady in the Water was funnier because I, I actually laughed my ass off at the lawn monster in Lady in the Water. And besides that, I had way more fun arguing with Benzai over Lady because <laughs> Benzai fucking loves that movie. No, you don't understand. He is trying to emote how genius he is. Have you ever argued with Benzai over that movie? (laughs) Dude. There's a video. There's a video of of Jillian arguing with Benzai for like an hour. It's fucking hilarious. (laughs) Oh, he... Dude, he was the one who... He hunted me down. (laughs) At like Kickassia? Oh god no. He was like he's like, dude, I heard you hated Lady in the Water, man. And I'm like, yeah, that movie sucked. And he's like, what do you mean? Because he wanted to do like a top ten or something like that. He was like he's like, dude, I'm doing a top ten movies of the year. I want he's like, I heard Lady he did. In- Yeah. He's like he did, he put it in his top ten. Yeah, he's like he's like, I'm doing a top ten and Lady in the Water's like number two, and I'm like what? It's, he's like, yeah. He's like, what do you mean? It's not number two. And I'm like, ah. And he's like, it's gonna be funny, man. And I'm like, 
<laughs> that was really funny, so. Hey, and actually I did a Benzai impression without saying bullshit, so. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the way I always figured doing Benzai's accent is just try to do a Borat, just make it a little less legible. Yeah. <laughs> and the Benzai is <laughs> <It's> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't talked to Benzai in the longest time. Me neither, actually. I need to, I need to call him up. <laughs> My abiding memory of Benzai is watching him play, uh, do a Let's Play a Heavy Rain, or Evy Rain. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that story? Oh, yeah, like, he just totally, completely pissed on the kid. He just <laughs> abandoned... No, 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 no. Because uh, he was like, he's a... Uh, He's uh he's playing Heavy Rain and there's that opening segment where you have to like you just, this is a bunch of pointless shit where you have to like shave and shower and shit like that and you, you try to go downstairs and he's like I, I I can't go downstairs I'm not dressed yet I need to wear pants at least and Benzai says in in all seriousness he's like wear pants but I'm at home <laughs> and like everyone oh. else. In the world, it's like, oh, oh, oh Benzai's so funny, and I'm like, I'm oh, he's. Not, I, I like Benzai's not joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. I'm like, oh, like, uh, Merlin, Merlin, to answer your question, which is worth worse, Battlefield Earth or After Earth? I'd say Battlefield Earth is much is a much more enjoyable set if oh, only yeah. John Travolta. Oh, yeah. Battlefield yeah. Earth is way more enjoyable. Now, is it a worse movie? Oh, yes. But it's way more enjoyable. I mean, it's a, it's a more poorly made film in all really regards. But there's a difference between being a worse made movie and being more enjoyable. I know that doesn't make sense, but... I mean, you enjoy movies on different levels. Like, you can enjoy a movie like, say, Space Mutiny because it's so fucking cheesy and it's... You know, it's, it's you know, Red Brown and he's acting all Red Browning. Let me put it. Let me put it this way. There's a difference between being a bad movie and a boring movie. There's, there's, you would rather watch a bad movie than a for, than a than a boring movie. I it's, I, it's, I don't know I don't know because I've seen a lot of bad films that aren't boring. No 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 because okay it's you'd rather watch a bad movie that's memorable than a than a movie that's just middle of the road and forgettable. You know what I mean? Because at least with a bad movie, you have something to bitch about. You know, you have something to talk about later. With a middle of the road movie, you've just wasted two hours of your fucking time. You're gonna forget about it by the time you walked out of the theater. And so uh, that's why I'm almost. It's with this movie at least. Uh, this movie. You weren't even really memorable scenes like something that you could laugh at that, that's why this movie almost rides the fence like this movie is almost like once you're done laughing at Jaden Smith's accent oh my god Jaden Smith has like two faces it was like we were actually like screaming at the screen stop making that face he's got his, he's got his powder face. Wrong with your face he's got his crying face which is <laughs> I can't even do that face. He does this face, like... Furrows his brow and turns his lips out. I don't like it. I hate it. I was getting some Anakin vibes out. No, it wasn't Anakin. No, it wasn't Anakin bad, but... I know you're the best ranger ever. I'm going to be the best ranger ever. I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. (laughs) It's it's and yeah I mean it's it's not like okay, okay chat room that's the thing is like I don't want to come down on Jaden Smith's acting I don't because it's like there are times when I come down on an actor's acting and regardless of age or? regardless of age and it's because like it, it's when they deserve it it's and it's this isn't one of those times it's like. It's not his fault. It, he does suck. But it's... You should have never been in that position in the first he, place he, unless he, daddy he's didn't... Been, he's been put in this position, and he shouldn't have been in this position. You know? 
and it, he shouldn't have been put in this position. That's that's the and, and that's what I mean is like when that's why this movie is almost worth watching. It's because that's why this movie is almost a work of art despite itself. It's because this movie is is life imitating art. It's because this movie is about this movie is about a kid who is put into a situation where he's he's meant to, he he's he's put into a situation where he's he's supposed to become like his father. He's meant to fill his father's shoes and he's 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 put into a situation where he's he's uh, he's overwhelmed by the same situation, and uh, in this case, he's he's not up to the challenge, and he wants to impress his father, and he's just not up to it. And uh, I think I think there is I think the perfect note to end it. Uh, in, in the movie, in the movie, he's uh, he meets the challenge and he's victorious. And I think in this case, it's sad. It's sad because he's just not up to it. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, his dad has unrealistic expectations for it. And that's why I, I feel bad. I, I come away from this one wanting to drink. I, I really do feel bad wanting to drink because I don't want to make fun of this movie. I don't because this movie sucks. It sucks because, you know, M. Night Shyamalan, you know, he started off really promising He's become a laughing stock. This is what he's become. You know, he's become this work for hire hack. He, you know, he, he's he's become this hack who can only get vanity projects. He had so much promise, and you know, it, his Will Smith is this guy who wants so badly for his son to be successful. Jaden Smith wants so hard for his son to be successful, and. Jaden wants so hard to make his son, his father proud, and this is just a disaster all around. And I think everyone knows it. At and this point, it would be like if Michael Bay directed Hudson Hawk. Yeah. So you know, I, I think all around this is just a huge disappointment. Everyone was just trying too hard, and I think that's the real shame. But at this, you know, that's that's why this movie is worth watching. I think it's it's not because of it's it's not because of the the narrative of the movie. It's because of the narrative of real life. I think by accident, this this movie is the tale of Will and Jaden Smith. It's it's not the tale of this movie. It's it's really a microcosm of Jaden Smith. This movie isn't worth watching. <laughs> I, I think I you know what I think it is. No, I I, I think it is because. It's a tragedy. Especially, I don't want to encourage them. I, I think it is because it's it's a tragedy, and it's it's it, it, I, I think it's a tragedy on a kind of a metaphysical level, and I, I really walked away from I, I walked away from it feeling kind of sad on the, on kind of a soulful level, and I think you can see that. Uh, yeah, this was a bummer. <laughs> this really hit me. This hit my soul. This really bummed me out. Uh, yeah. This one sucked. It. Wow. Any last words, Bennett? Uh, it has been a pleasure. Wish we could do this more often. And just want to give some backstory here quickly. Seeing, hearing Spoonie try to get the live stream working was like watching a cat try to chase a laser pointer. He spent like 40 minutes getting this stream to work. I tried my best, guys. Hopefully it worked out okay. <laughs> anyway, Miles? I want to see Superman Returns. There's no fucking trailer for Superman Returns! Instead we got fucking R.I.P.D. <laughs> Fuck you, R.I.P.D. Hey, don't you mean uh, Man of Steel? Because Superman Returns is the last movie. Oh, God. I'll see that one, too. But oh, God. Yeah, Man of Steel. R.I.P.D. Oh, hell no. I just want to see Superman. That's the only movie left on my summer. Well, that and Pacific Rim. Yeah, I was about to say, what about the Pacific Rim? Could you have named a movie a more unhelpful title? Couldn't you have just named it, like, Robot Jocks 2? <laughs> that's mean, Robot Jocks. That's what it is. Pacific Rim. 
What does that mean? That doesn't say anything. Pacific <laughs> Rim. That's a sex act. No, that's like, that doesn't mean anything. Pacific <laughs> Rim. That sounds like a World War II movie. I guess it's in reference to the fact that most of the fighting is going to be off the Pacific Rim. That's not descriptive. You've got to have a movie with a descriptive title. That's why I hate that. I hate movies that don't have a descriptive title, and I hate movies that just are a name. Like, like, like uh, Jack Reacher, Harry Brown. That doesn't help me. Harry Brown. Alex Cross. Alex Cross. You know Cross. Alex Cross. You know, I'm sure they're good movies. But not it's a, Alex not Alex Cross. No, but like, but I don't know. <laughs> ah, Mr. Cross. It's time I see for you having a lovely dinner with your wife. But I don't know that because it's just a name. I don't know, but like the but they're like Bangkok Dangerous, okay? Like somebody, but at least I know something. We're gonna talk Alex Cross and we're pouring more shots. <laughs> it's in Bangkok. At least that's a memorable name, Bangkok Dangerous. Bad Lieutenant, it's about a bad, bad lieutenant. guy. I, I, I don't know. It, Big Trouble in Little China. That's descriptive. It, it actually carries some of the spirit of the movie, and it tells me where it is. Forrest Gump. I don't know what the fuck that's about. Star Wars. Perfect. World War Z is a pretty great title. World War Z. Star Trek. Perfect. Shaft. That's not bad. <laughs> that actually carries a lot. The thing that's actually not bad. I I actually get quite a lot from that. <laughs> you get a lot from the thing. The thing. It's it, that sounds like it's an alien movie. Might as well call it the place. No, I get. I actually get quite a lot from the thing. Scott Pilgrim sucks. The thing. They live. That's. I actually get quite a lot from. They live. It's a little misleading, actually, when you watch the movie. But alien. That's actually that. You know. I'm, I'm, Night of the Living Dead, there you go. Toy the Patriot. Story. Little Shop of Horrors, I get stuff Which from that. Which one, Mel Gibson or Steven Seagal? <laughs> See, Evil Dead, I get stuff from that. Mama, I got nothing from that. Waterworld. <laughs> you got too much for that one. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's... there's The Postman. Chucky is not a... That, that was not the title of the movie. Bride of Chucky was, but... Bride of Chucky, yeah. So anyway, Zardoz. <laughs> actually, actually, Zardoz tells you pretty much everything you need to know about that movie. Oh, that Zardoz, Zardoz, the god is good. The penis is evil. Blah. <laughs> anyway, I have rambled on. But yeah, like, yeah, Pacific Rim. That's a stupid... Cloverfield! Don't rain on my Pacific Rim Parade, motherfucker. No, I'm saying the movie's probably gonna be okay, but the title is stupid! <laughs> it is! Cloverfield! <laughs> the title is stupid! Pacific Rim, Spooty be mad. Cloverfield! The title has nothing to do with anything! I defy you to tell me what that title has to do with anything. If Man of Steel is bad, I'm finishing this bottle. I can't take it if it's bad. Triple X. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I hear that it that it was released for early critical uh, viewing. Studios don't do that. At least they have some good faith in it. That's true. The Room. No, it does take place in The Room. No, nah, Room is so vague. There's plenty of rooms in The Room. There are a few rooms, yes. Uh, let's see, uh, taxi driver. There is a taxi driver. <laughs> yeah. It is a little vague. <laughs> Thin red line. That one sucks, yes. <laughs> Southland Tale sucks. 
The incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed up zombies fairly accurate. That's incredibly accurate. That's incredibly spot on, really. That's like on a library card. Yeah. Frogs. <laughs> Frogs was bullshit. That was a lie. That one was an outright lie. I saw that movie this week. It was a fucking lie. <laughs> Frogs don't do jack shit. <laughs> We're, actually, now I, gotta, now I really want to think about that. <laughs> We're going to cut this off because we are going way off target here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, After Earth sucks. If I were to sum it up in two words, Cypher Rage. Goodbye. Take a knee. 